smartphone hacking is a lucrative business. So lucrative, in fact, there are multi-million dollar companies that are buying software vulnerabilities from security researchers and reselling them to anyone interested in exploiting them. It's not because hacking into smartphones is easy, it's because it's so worth it. Your phone is an inseparable part of you. It's a digital book of your life, with so much detail unlike anything before it. Access into your phone is an access into your mind. Your phone isn't just a gadget. Your phone is you. You're a cyborg. You're a cyborg. This is the second part in my series of digital security tutorials. If you want to support this work, feel free to donate to my Patreon. I release bi-weekly coverage of security and technology news and cyber politics. So if you like more of the hated ones, it's all on my Patreon page. This digital security tutorial is focused on security of mobile operating systems. Our threat model focuses on a general user who faces most common threats from low resource targeted attacks and spray and prey fraud and scam attacks. The third type of attack, advanced persistent threat, that is mostly a state sponsored adversary, requires dedicated attention to extraordinary knowledge of your adversary's capabilities. I will cover this level of protection in my future videos, but if your life depends on strong security, seek immediate advice from a professional. The least I can tell you for now is that smartphones openly broadcast so much data and are so, such complicated pieces of technology that it is impossible to use them securely in these situations. The purpose of security isn't to make an impenetrable device. That's impossible. The goal of security is to exhaust the resources of your adversaries to the point they lose interest or run out of resources to breach your security. And just to give you a clarification, this is a security tutorial, not a, not a privacy tutorial. The concepts of privacy and security sometimes overlap, but they are different, so some steps listed here will favor security at the expense of privacy. Let's start with the easiest one, device encryption. This one is probably enabled by default, but to double check, search for encrypt device in your settings app and follow instructions on the screen. On older Android devices, you should have your device charged and plugged in during encryption, which may take up to several hours. Make sure you use either a strong alphanumeric passcode or a PIN that's at least six digits long. You should also set your device to erase all the data on your phone after too many wrong attempts. This protects your device against brute force attacks when somebody gets physical access. But don't have false expectations about what device encryption can and can't protect your data from. Encrypting your phone does not protect you from malware or remote exploitation. Device encryption only protects your phone if you lose it or someone steals it from you. If whoever with physical access into your phone has enough time and resources, they could bypass the encryption. In this scenario, both Android and iOS give you an option to remotely wipe your phone if you fear somebody can access your data. If you want this functionality, turn on Find My Device and in the disaster scenario, wipe it from your Google account or Apple ID. Links to these functionalities are in the description. Be aware that this will not erase your SD card, so any content on there might be vulnerable. Find My Device will only erase your data when your phone is on and is connected to Wi-Fi or cellular network. Enable 2FA on your Google account or Apple ID. This might be invisible to you, but your phone is connected to your Google account or Apple ID, and thus is only as secure as your online accounts. Secure them with strong passwords and second factor authentication. For 2FA, use an app that generates one-time passwords. Good ones are Authy, Google Authenticator, and OTP or free OTP. You should also have a backup authentication in case you lose your phone. The best option is to go for a USB security token. These cost a little bit of money, but it is worth it. Get a YubiKey or Nitro key. They're both very good. If you don't want to spend money, you can generate recovery codes and write them down somewhere in a secure location. When it comes to your password, make a long and easily memorable passphrase or generate a strong and unique password with a password manager. Remember to store backups of your passwords outside of your phone in case you lose it. 
update and reboot. Set your updates to be downloaded and installed automatically. Most all of the hacks in existence happen because of bad passwords and outdated software. Hackers share known software vulnerabilities on forums and they rely on the fact they have a more than 50% chance to hit a device with outdated software. A lot of malware doesn't stay on your phone after reboot, so make it a habit to reboot your phone often. It's also good for your mental health to not leave your phone on all the time, so learn to switch off. Application Firewall Don't do anything on your phone without an application firewall. Mobile apps require tons of unnecessary permissions and there are loads of malicious apps floating around on app stores that will steal your data at the moment you install them. This can be prevented to a large extent by having a good firewall. The best free and open source option is NetGuard for Android and Lockdown for iOS. You can use app firewalls in two ways. You either review your apps and blacklist network access to them individually. This is called a blacklist mode. Or, and I would recommend to go for this one, you can automatically block network access to all of your apps and only allow the ones that truly need it. This is called a whitelist mode. Review permissions and be minimalistic. Apps have the easiest access to your data. So be minimalist and review the permissions you give them properly. Apps can't do much except for what you allow them. Some apps request a lot of permissions and can still work fine if you revoke them. This can be long, but it's not like reading a privacy policy, so definitely do it. Keep your app count to a minimum. Only keep apps that you really need and use, and uninstall apps you no longer need. The more apps you have, the more exposed to software vulnerabilities you are. Hackers are thriving on exploiting these software vul vulnerabilities, many of which don't get patched for months or years. For convenient security, do not download or install apps from outside of the official app stores. Apps in these repositories are cryptographically signed by developers and platforms, which ensures the authenticity of the apps. On Android, disable the option to install from unofficial sources in case you have it enabled. Connectivity. Make it a habit to disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth when you are not using them. You should also disable automatic connection because hackers can easily set up a malicious network and if your phone connects to it, your device and data is in their hands. You should be aware of every network connection your phone makes. Public Wi-Fi's are evil. Use a VPN or Tor to hide your traffic when connected to an open network. Most VPNs are evil too, and good options are often paid, so, so Tor is a more convenient option. On Android, you can run Tor system-wide with Orbot. Best Onion browsers are Tor for Android on Android and Onion Browser on iOS. The only free VPN I would recommend would be Proton VPN. They only offer a few servers in the USA, Netherlands and Japan and the speed might not be up there, but it's better than transmitting your data openly on a public network. If you want to go Snowden crazy, disable Wi-Fi completely and only use an Ethernet cable to connect to your home network. This way you can prevent hackers from tricking your phone into connecting to their malicious Wi-Fi hotspots. Secure backup, cloud and syncing. If you're using backups or syncing, make sure they are encrypted as well. Cloud backups are oftentimes an easy target to steal your private data. Secure your accounts with 2FA. If you use Google Drive or iCloud, your cloud backups use the same 2FA as your main Google account or Apple ID connected to your phone. If you decide to trust your default providers, you are not in control of the security of your data. Apple holds your decryption keys and they can access your data in the iCloud anytime they want. And I think only you should be able to decrypt your data. CryptoMatter allows you to create encrypted vaults and automatically sync your secure backups to a cloud service of your choice. If you don't pay for the service, you are the product. So I would recommend to go for Nextcloud. You can get between 2 to 5 gigabytes of cloud storage for free, but it might not be enough for those of you taking plenty of high resolution photos. But Nextcloud is free and open source and many providers even offer end-to-end -end encryption. So this is the, is the cloud service that you should go for. Browser. Browsers are dangerous. They're like an operating system within an operating system. Browsers run every code from any website without any rigorous verification. 
They can load malicious JavaScript ads or frames that can remotely take over your phone without any interaction or awareness on your side. You should keep your browser usage to an absolute necessity. If you have to use a browser, follow these steps. The best mobile browser in terms of security and privacy is Bromite. Bromite supports ad blocking natively as it can use uBlock Origin. Make sure you set it to encrypt your DNS queries. It has some privacy and security enhancements from other projects like Brave or Graphene OS. Install HTTPS everywhere and set it to block all unencrypted traffic. JavaScript is evil, so disable JavaScript entirely and only enable it for websites that are too broken without it. On iOS, I would recommend Brave Browser or stick to Google Chrome. If privacy is a bigger concern than security, use Firefox Focus or DuckDuckGo Privacy Browser. Harden Privacy Settings Increasing your privacy can also improve your security. Opt out of personalized advertising. If it's important to you, disable location services and activity. Disabling location will break Find My Device, but it will improve your privacy. It's up to you to decide whether you think you are more likely to have your phone stolen by someone who has enough resources to bypass its encryption than you are worried about Apple and Google tracking your location. I would recommend to not keep any sensitive data on your phone and delete everything periodically. That way you don't have to worry that much about physical security of your phone and you can disable location services, also known as stalkerware. Speaking of stalkerware, for some reason, there is an emergence of idiots spying on other people. If you have a moronic spouse, employer, parent or friend, they might have installed so-called stalkerware on your phone. Stalkerware is a commercial spyware someone intentionally installs on your phone. The app then installs additional spying tools that track your activity and send it to the stalker. The stalker then deletes the main app and the remaining spying tools will continue the work completely hidden. You will never notice anything is going on on your phone. If you suspect you might be followed, the fastest and most certain option is to factory reset your device. Search for factory reset in your settings app and follow the instructions on screen. Make sure you back up your data first because this will delete everything. After that, never leave your phone unattended. Even if it's locked, your spouse might learn your PIN or passcode through close by observation. The best move is to just shoot your stalker because those who are actually doing this are just wasting oxygen. Following these basic security steps protects you against majority of threats with minimal effort. Please support this video by keeping engagement high. And if you like this tutorial series, keep it alive by donating to my Patreon. Also, if you have any other security and especially operation security tips, feel free to post them down below in the comment section. Stay vigilant about your own security and stay free. Thank you for watching.